So this is the second problem on test two. And if you notice here, you have a very long equation with a bunch of fractions equaling five. So what is the solution to the equation? One half X plus three over two times in parentheses X plus one minus one over four. So what we need to do is we have to look at these fractions. And the first thing that, I have to that we have to remember is that when we're adding or subtracting fractions, the denominator, the number on the bottom, has to be the same. So we have twos here, which are the same, but then, oh my goodness, this one here equals four. So the first thing I wanna do is turn this and this into a four. So let's rewrite this equation. I'm going to spread it out a little bit so I can make some changes to it. So I'm going to leave the 1 over 2x. I'm going to put a little space over here and then put 3 over 2 times x plus 1. The 1 over 4, since I want to turn these 2s into a 4, I don't need any extra space. So I'm just going to leave that be. And that equals five. So the reason I created space in here, because I want to multiply both of these by one, but I'm not just going to put a big one there and multiply it. I'm going to put it as a fraction. So if I multiply three over two by two over two, two over two equals one. Now going back to the order of operations or PEMDAS, we can just multiply these things before we move on because these, the multiplication would happen before the addition or subtraction. So these are basically together. Now I also want to convert this one over two so it has a four on the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to multiply it by two over two because two over two equals one, two over two equals one. If we multiply a number by one, it might look different but it's still the same value. So that's especially true with fractions. So watch this. So two times one is two, and then two times two is four. And then we have to remember that it's an X, plus we have two times three is six over two times two, which is four. And then we're gonna multiply by this by this parentheses, by this grouping of X plus one. We're just gonna bring that one over four down because now all the fours are okay. We don't have to worry about them anymore because they all have the same denominator. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna distribute this six over four to both of these terms. So we have an X that I wanna multiply six by four over four, and then I have a one that I wanna multiply by six over four. So I'm gonna multiply both of these. So watch how I do this. The first thing I wanna do is six over four times X. Now, I'm gonna throw you for a little bit of a curve. I'm gonna turn all of these X's into X over one. This way we can have the X on the top and then the four on the bottom. Cause you know that X over one is the same thing as X. Just like if you had, I don't know, 17 over one is the same as just 17. You know that these are equal. So let's do the same thing here. So I'm gonna distribute these two just so I can get rid of these parentheses. So six times X is six X over four times one which is four. And then we have six times one is six. And then on the bottom, four times one is four, right? So six over four times one is six over four. It didn't change the value at all. Now I'm gonna bring this one over four straight down. We're gonna remember that it all equals five. Now the last thing I need to do is multiply this. So two times X is two X, and then four times one is four. Okay, so now that we have all of the denominators the same, we can rewrite this entire mess like this. Two X plus six X, plus six minus one, and they're all over four. 
So it's already starting to look a little bit neater because we've taken all of the numerators, we've moved them up top here, and since it's all the same denominator, we can just put one four on the bottom, and this all equals five. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to combine like terms. And the way we do that is we look at the ones that have x's and we combine those. So we have 2x plus 6x, 2 plus 6 is 8. Don't forget it's 8x. And then we have positive 6 minus 1. 6 minus 1 is a positive 5. And then on the bottom is 4. And all of this equals 5. Now I love that it went from all of this mess, went from all of this mess to that. And that's looking nice and neat. Now I remember when I was a kid and I first learned about fractions, I was like, oh my God, fractions are hard. So when I learned that you can make fractions go away in equation by multiplying it on both sides by the, take whatever's in the denominator and you multiply it by whatever's here, you put it up here in the numerator over one. So four over one is four. So again, if we're balancing the equation, if we multiply this side by four, we're gonna multiply this side by four because whatever you do on this side, you have to do on this side. So instead of writing four as a fraction here, I'm just gonna write it like this because I wanna make these fractions go away. So everyone knows that five times four is 20. Now here, if you have a four on the top and a four on the bottom, you can make them go away. So bye-bye. And all we're left here now, since this has all been simplified to one, we don't have to worry about the denominator anymore. All we're gonna do is just bring down the numerator here, which is eight X plus five. Now I'm gonna need another piece of paper because I'm already at the bottom. So what we have here now is we have 8x plus 5. Now I want to get the x by itself. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this positive 5. So what I'm going to do here, watch this little trick that I do, is I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Because if I subtract 5 from the left side, I also have to subtract 5 from the right side. So 20 minus 5 is 15, and positive 5 minus 5 is 0, so I don't even need to bring down a 0, so all I'm going to do is just bring down this 8x. Because why would I write down 0? I don't need to put down that. So now we have 8x equals 15. So we're not asked to solve for 8x, we just have to get x by itself. So earlier, I showed you how to get rid of the denominator by multiplying it by whatever's down here. You flip it and you put it on the top. So this is over, so it's 8x plus 5 over 4. We multiplied it just by 4 and that simplified out. Now here we're going to do the same thing is we're going to divide both sides by 8. If I put 8 on the, if I divide this side by 8, I also have to divide this side by 8. Because if we multiply both sides, we have to multiply on the left and the right. If we subtract, we have to subtract on the left and right addition, same thing. Same thing with division. If we divide by 8 on both sides, it balances. Okay, so 8 over 8 is the same thing as 1 over 1. So 1 over 1 is just 1. So we're just going to write down the x. And then this we don't do anything to because you can't simplify this because 8 does not go evenly into 15. So this just stays the same. So we've done our first algebra. Um, it had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 seven steps to get to the final answer. Um, but again, you need to know your order of operations a little bit. You need to know how to distribute, um, how to dist when you multiply to both of these terms that are in the brackets, and then you have to get rid of your, uh, uh, make sure that all of your denominators are the same. So it's a bunch of steps, but when you break it down into individual steps, it's just not, it's not impossible. So the final answer, x equals 5 eighths is this one here.